Hello, this is Mrs. Kohler, and I'm going to talk to you today about chromosomal abnormalities. So we're going to talk about what happens when something goes wrong with your chromosomes. The first major way that something can go wrong with your chromosomes is called non-disjunction. And non-disjunction occurs when your chromosomes don't separate properly during meiosis. So here's a diagram of non-disjunction occurring, and it can occur during meiosis 1 or meiosis 2. But to better explain it, I'm going to show you a video. Hello. In the Prezi that we were just doing, I talked about non-disjunction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use three imaginary cells and show you what actually happens during a normal cell and what would happen during non-disjunction when the chromosomes don't separate properly so that you can see what it does to the final egg or sperm. These Green X's here would symbolize the chromosomes in a normal cell. So this is what would happen during normal cell division. So we have two sets of chromosomes, two tetrads. So what would happen normally during meiosis is this set would separate and this set would separate, and that's meiosis 1. And then they would go ahead and they would separate a second time. So when they separate a second time, you end up with one of each chromosome in each new cell and one of each chromosome in each new cell. So you end up with four new cells, each one that has two chromosomes. So this is normal cell division. Now, sometimes what happens is during the first part of meiosis, one of these tetrads doesn't separate properly. So in this case, what you would end up happening is these would separate normally, but for one reason or another, these would stay stuck together. And then when they go through the second round of division, what you end up happening is you end up with two cells that have one less chromosome than normal and two cells that have one more chromosome than normal. So this is what's called a monosomy because it only has one. This is called a trisomy because it has three. Now the last thing that can happen is that during the second phase of meiosis, these could fail to separate properly. So in the first phase of meiosis, they act as normal. They do what they're supposed to do. And then this one's going to complete it normally so that you get one of each chromosome in the final cell. But in this one, it's not going to separate properly in the second stage. So what you end up with is two normal sperm or eggs and then one sperm or egg that has one too many chromosomes or, and one sperm or egg that has one too few chromosomes. Okay, so you just finished watching my pipe cleaner demonstration of non-disjunction in meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So as you can see, what it causes sometimes is for some gametes to have more chromosomes than normal, and sometimes it causes gametes to have less chromosomes than normal. And then there are certain disorders that happen when this occurs. The majority of the time, the person doesn't survive. The majority of the time, the mother's body aborts the baby before they're even born when something like this happens. But there are a few cases where the person can still survive. We'll start with Down syndrome, and it's probably one that you're familiar with. Most people have met a person that has Down syndrome. Down syndrome is called trisomy 21, and the tri part means three, and the 21 refers to the number of the chromosome. So people with trisomy 21 have an extra copy of chromosome 21. So. Common symptoms of Down syndrome would be facial abnormalities, heart problems such as a heart murmur or a leaky valve, and mild to moderate mental retardation. Um, sometimes it's severe enough that they have to live with their parents their whole lives, but sometimes they can live on their own, hold down jobs. So here's a little girl with Down syndrome. You can see from her picture that her face is fairly flat and her eyes slant upward as well as she has a larger forehead. Those are some of the main facial features of people with Down syndrome. They also tend to be short. Next disorder caused by non-disjunction is Turner syndrome. 
If you have Turner syndrome, you are a female, but instead of the normal two X chromosomes, you only have one. So if you look at this karyotype, it's that they have all normal pairs of chromosomes, but this individual has one X chromosome. She doesn't have a second X chromosome and she doesn't have a Y chromosome, so she's missing one. So this would actually be written as 45X to show that they have 45 chromosomes instead of the normal 46 and that the problem is that they have one X chromosome and not the second X or Y. So women with Turner syndrome are almost always infertile. They tend to be short. Their breasts tend to be much smaller than normal. Webbed neck, which is extra flaps of skin on their neck. And they also tend to have heart problems. This is a girl with Turner syndrome. She's actually about ready to graduate from high school, but she appears much younger. If you look at her neck, it looks like it's too wide, but it's really just that there's extra skin there. That's the webbing. And if you look at her hands as well, her fingers are short in proportion to the palms of her hands. Kleinfelter syndrome is a disorder that males have. It's shown by XXY to show that although they are male because they have an X and a Y, they have an extra X chromosome. So all of the chromosomes are normal pairs until you get to the end where you have two X's and a Y. Symptoms of this would be, again, infertility. Now where girls with Turner are short, Boys with Kleinfelter are tall, and when I say tall, I mean like between 6, 8, and 7 feet tall. They do tend to develop some breasts, and they tend to have language difficulties. So this is a man with Kleinfelter syndrome. He's actually a teenage boy. So you'll notice a little bit of breast development and a little bit of extra fat around the hips that you would normally see in a teenage boy. And this sheet behind him is at about six feet. So, so you can see a good seven or eight inches of him is sticking up above that. So he's about six, seven or six, eight, extremely tall. And then Jacob syndrome is probably the most controversial of the chromosomal disorders. It's symbolized by XYY. Men that have Jacob syndrome have one extra Y chromosome and there's disagreement as to whether this is actually a disorder or not. The reason being that the majority of men that have this are normal males. The problem that comes in with this is having the extra Y chromosome, the theory is that these males produce more testosterone than normal, and testosterone can trigger learning disabilities such as ADHD and dyslexia, and it can also trigger higher than normal levels of aggression. So when you look at populations of males that are in prison or that have been expelled from schools, you find a much higher proportion of men with an extra Y chromosome in these populations than you do in the general population. So some scientists think that it is a disorder. Some scientists think that it's not. It's still kind of up in the air.